Is it working? I don't know if I'm on or not. Is there anyone here? Oh, it's on. Oh, wait, where'd the sound go? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Is that no sound? Oh, there's sound now. Okay. Hello. Um. <laughs> Hello everyone. I'm gonna turn this down because I can't hear myself. Again. Um. So yeah, I'm only gonna go over the first part today, and then there'll be a second part sometime, either this week or I don't know whether to do a stream a baby stream this weekend and then the second part of this next week i don't know what people would prefer they prefer to see babies or not um i'm reading the chats down here so that's what i'm reading i hope anyone wants to talk at me um, but in this part I'm just going to go over like the basics of genetics and how it works and then also yeah just like the basic part and then next the next one I'll do um, what happens when you cross them right so like if you had a certain mouse and you mixed it with another mouse what you'd get like that sort of thing um, so I guess I'll start now, if everyone's ready. And then I'll upload this as well. Yeah, you can write down things if you want. <laughs> um, but I will re-upload this, so if you miss any of it, then you can come back and watch it. Um, so yeah. If you want to know, I'll have my notebook here, so if anyone asks questions, I'll write it down and then get to it at some point. But there is a delay with the chat, so um, I'm not ignoring you if I don't answer straight away. <laughs> so I guess I'll start. Um, I'm going to go over like the basic part of how genetics work, but like keep it really simple. It's not essential you know this part, but I think it helps to understand it a bit but if you have any questions or uh, say something that don't make sense just let me know and I'll try and re-explain it <laughs> better so the first part is how like the actual genes work if everyone's ready anyway I don't want to just start <laughs> um, but you have so I think we all, like most of us know about how chromosomes and stuff are or what they are at least um, but you have a chromosome which is we have humans have 23 chromosomes mice have 40 chromosomes and each chromosome is responsible for different things like they describe how the human how the human how the thing looks right um or how it works so when when you have you have the chromosome and then each part of the chromosome, so this is a chromosome over here, each part of the chromosome is 
four different things and each section is called a locus or multiples are called loci but I'm just explaining this because I will refer to it but it's not really necessary to know really um, so yeah you get one from your mum and one from your dad that's the most important part is that you get one from mum one from dad so um, and then when you have genes you have like dominant ones and recessive ones dominant ones are ones that are more important so they like override anything else that are below it so for example pink eyes are recessive black eyes are dominant so if a mouse has black eyes their babies will some of their babies will have black eyes too because black overrides pink um, so I'll go into each locus there's not that many um, and tell you what part is what I guess um, so within the A locus the A locus determines the yellow and black pigment in the coat so it will say it so it controls the yellow and black in the mouse which with mice yellow is also called red which is a bit confusing but um yeah yellow and red are kind of the same term um so you have the first locus which is the a locus and the first the most dominant one is lethal yellow and lethal yellow removes any black pigment from the mouse so it makes the mouse just completely yellow or red um, and then they are all genetically prone to obesity as well just naturally I don't know why <laughs> they just are um, and a fun fact about lethal yellow which is why they're called lethal yellow is because you cannot have a homozygous yellow which means they cannot have a yellow gene from the mum and a yellow gene from the dad they have to have one yellow gene and another something else um, because if they have two yellow genes they will they won't make it they'll die in they'll get in they get reabsorbed when they're an embryo so they won't be born they'll just die and then re be reabsorbed into the mum before I think it's around six days um, hold on. Um, so I don't know I've got these in. The next one is a gooty, uh, which is the wild one. And how a gooty looks is it's black at the root and then yellow or red at the tip of the hair, with some black hairs, like solid black hairs, ticking through. That's what makes the agouti colour. And this is, I'm not going to mention all of the different genes, um, just some of them. <laughs> the most like common ones anyway. But you have agouti and this one comes just below yellow. So you have yellow as the most dominant and then you have agouti as the second one. And then you have tan, which is pretty easy to kind of distinguish it has the ginger belly and the black or any color top um, but the ginger belly is what makes it a tan mouse um, and then this is like the second uh, the third in the list of most dominant to least dominant um, and they can be any color on the top part but the bottom will stay like a ginger colour, red or yellow. And then you have the least dominant, the most recessive, well it's not the most, there's also extreme black that comes underneath it, but this is the recessive one which is just a black self um, and it removes all yellow or red pigment from the coat. And then that's all that you get in the A locus. There are a couple others like that are not as common but um, these are the most common four genes that you'll find um, and these are like the base colours so every mouse will either be a gooty, tan, yellow or black 
and then you add on other genes that dilute that colour down to whatever colour you're trying to make it. But every mouse's base colour will either be black, yellow or agouti. So the it will either be um, because the, you have the base colour of yellow, black or agouti so tan will either be agouti, yellow or tan when it's yellow you can't really tell the difference because it will be yellow on top, yellow on bottom so it don't look any different but it will either be agouti or black and then you can add in other genes like chocolate and that from the other locuses but from the A locus it will either only be agouti or black or yellow, if that makes sense. Have I frozen? Oh, oh no, I've just, okay. Uh, okay, does that, does that make sense? And so every mouse is either agouti or black most of the time, or yellow. But yellow is not as common. Um, it's either agouti or black most of the time. And then from that base, you can add in other genes that will change the colour to whatever you, you're trying to make. But they will always start as either a gooty or black. Um, so yeah, then we're going to the next locus, which is the B locus. This one's pretty easy because there's not as many genes. There's only two genes. It's either no dilute or a chocolate dilute. That's it. That's all the B locus does. Is it either has um, black or brown. It decides whether the mouse is going to be black or brown or how the black hair will look. It will either be black or brown. Um, so, for example, if you have an agouti base and the chocolate dilute, it will make a cinnamon because it will make all the black hair in the agouti a chocolate colour. Um, and then if you have a black mouse, a black self, with the chocolate dilute, it will make a full chocolate mouse because it will turn all the black hair to the chocolate. So it's pretty easy to be like this. It will just, it's either black or brown, that's all it decides. And then you have other genes to add on to that. It's like, for example, if you added the pink eyed gene, it would ch turn chocolate into champagne. But we'll get to pink eyes later. <laughs> um, but the B locus is just whether the black hair will be black or brown. So it's pretty easy that one. That will make sense. Any questions about the bees? Um, and then usually when you write out the mouse's like code, you'll do it in the order. So you start with A, then B, then C, then D, um, and that will describe the mouse and what its genetics is. So um, once you understand or you kind of remember the different locuses and what each gene code is, it'll be pretty easy to read what the uh, makeup is of the mouse. Um, it's just like a its own little code language that you have to learn. <laughs> the next, I'm going to skip over the C locus because it's a little bit more complicated, but and go straight to D because D is easy again, like um, B. So the D locus is whether the mouse will be blue or not. So you have so you have the B locus, which is chocolate or not, and then you have the D locus, which is blue or not. That makes sense. I will um, post the slide, but um, I still need to do the second part, so I won't post it today but I will post it at some point. And I realised the camera is over the thingy, isn't it? Hold on.
Let me, oh, wrong one. Let me move me over, because I am in the wrong place. So, that's better. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's all that the D locus does. It's whether the mouse is going to be blue or not. And then you have like different groups within that. So like all the mice that have a blue base will be will have the blue dilute the D locus one. Next is pink eyes. So pink eyes doesn't just affect the eyes, it will affect the colour as well. So it dilutes the colour as well. So the capital oh I didn't really mention what the letters meant did I so the capital one will means it's dominant and the lowercase means it's recessive so um, if they have a capital P in their P locus that means they have black eyes if they have a lowercase P that means they have pink eyes um, and then from there that will affect the color as well so for example if you have a black mouse with a black base um, and they have the pink eyed gene, it will dilute black down to a grey colour, which will be dove. Or if you have a black mouse with the chocolate gene, so you then have a chocolate mouse, with the pink eyed dilute, it would turn it from chocolate to champagne. So it's just like maths. Is it poor? Is it jumping? Is it like lagging or something? I think there's one. Uh, I'm. There's one more. I'm going to talk about. Is it working fine or is it jumping? Okay, I'm gonna move to the next one, which is the C locus. The C locus is the biggest one. Um, okay, it's not lagging. Um, so the C locus is the most confusing one. <laughs> um, so the capital C means there's no dilute, that's just a normal mouse. Uh, and then you have the chinchilla gene, the extreme dilute gene, which makes things like beige and coffee. And then chinchilla makes chinchilla. And the thing with the C locus is that they don't have a hierarchy other than the no dilution. That's the only one that's most dominant. But other than that, the rest of the genes can all mix and max, ma mix and match together. So it's not like with the A locus where they all came in an order where you had yellow was more dominant and then a gooty and then black. It's not like that with the C locus. They all can work together um, and they're all at the same level so you, you can mix them together so you can put a chinchilla gene with an extreme dilute gene and make something else um, so they're like co-dominant with each other they can both present at the same time um, and then these are the most common C locus genes which are the ones that make the Siamese so the the code for Siamese is actually called Himalayan, which is confusing because you also have a variety called Himalayan. Um, but you have this gene here, which is CH. And if you have two CH genes, so they get one CH from mom, one CH from dad, that will make a Siamese mouse. And then you have the C just the C gene which is albino so if they have two C genes one from mum and one from dad that will make a pink eyed white and then 
if you mix them together, so you have a Siamese gene from mum and a, um, it is lagging. Oh no! <laughs> I don't know what to do about it. Do I just wait it out? Let me check real quick on here. Oh, it says it's fine on here. Uh, I am nearly finished. <laughs> so, is it fine now? Okay. Um, okay. Well, uh, where did I get to? All right. So, yeah, if you add um, Siamese, one Siamese gene from mum and a albino gene from dad for example it would make a Himalayan mouse and then to tell the difference between Siamese and Himalayan is that um, Siamese has like a beige body colour and then Himalayan has a white body colour so that's how you tell the difference um, so when you have Himalayan so if you was to breed two Himalayans together you would get some Siamese, some Himalayan, and some pink-eyed whites, like I got with my Siamese, uh, my Himalayan girl, Pebbles. Um, so that's interesting. Um, and then you have, was that the last one? I think, yeah, so that was the last one. That's all for the colour coats. And then you have things like I didn't write them down but I will add them in for people that want the slide um, and the slideshows on Google Slides so anyone can look at it if they want um, it's free to look at and I will add it in the description of this video and then I'll post it on my Instagram as well so anyone can look over it um, but you have other genes that control like the coat type, so you have like satin, curly ones, long haired ones, bald ones, <laughs> um, all of those types of ones, so they all come in to the same thing, they have different locuses though, um, so you have for example satin, satin's recessive and the, the code for satin is SA, so a capital S lowercase a would be non-satin and then lowercase s, lowercase a is satin and they need two satin genes, so one from mum, one from dad to be satin, same with any other recessive genes, they need to get two of them in order to be it um, but with dominant genes they only need one in order to be it um, so with satin, yeah satin is just recessive so they need one from mum, one from dad um, and then fun fact about satins is that they have white teeth for some reason. Well, there is a reason. I don't know what the reason is. <laughs> um, and then you have curly ones. So you have asterix, which is short-haired curly. And that is actually dominant. So they own, only one parent has to be curly to have curly babies. Um... And then you have long haired, which is recessive. So both parents have to be or carry long haired, the whole long haired gene. And the long haired gene is GO. If anyone writing anything down. <laughs> um, so it's lowercase g, lowercase o. And the gene for it is Angora. That's what it's called. And then you have Texel, which is the mix of both. So if a mouse is Asterix and Angora, so long haired, they will be Texel. So Texel is long haired curly. Asterix is short haired curly. And Angora is long haired. That will make sense. Um, and then you also have coloured one, so um, what's the name? 
marked varieties like pied for example pied is re recessive too so both parents have to be or have the pied gene um, otherwise you won't get any pied babies and I believe the code for pied is S I think <laughs> um, so uppercase S I mean they don't have the pi gene, lowercase s, is they have the pi gene. Um, and then you have splashed, which is a little bit more complicated. So splashed is dominant. The actual gene for splashed is dominant. So they only need one gene, one splash gene, in order to be splashed. Um, so only one parent has to be or have the splash gene. Well, they'd have to be it. You can't carry the splash gene. Well, you, you can, but I'll get into it in a minute. <laughs> um, so you only need one splash gene to be uh, splashed. I did all the research myself, but there is some websites which I will share on my Instagram. The, um, where I did the research obviously <laughs> um, but it was all just researched myself but there are websites where you can find it all um, I've just put it into like really easy to understand words I guess <laughs> um, so with splashed is dominant can any parent be dominant or is there any rule for male or female who has to be the dominant? No, so any parent can be dominant, it doesn't matter because they will get it from the, they will get one gene from each parent. So for example, every mouse, so if we was to look at the A locus, for example, let me just ignore all this, this isn't my writing obviously. Let me write it down so you can see. So every mouse where did it go <laughs> right so uh, okay can you see that um, so if we look at like the a locus for example because they get one from mum one from dad that means they will always have two so say mum was a gooty which was um, capital A um, and she was fully a gooey, so she had two a gooey genes. And then dad was, let me move this over. And then dad was black, so he would have two lowercase genes, right? Um, all their babies will be, I put this the wrong way around. Let me just, oh. So there's a, Thing you can like follow Oop. you can do like a grid let me make that smaller again <sighs> okay so this is how you would put it out right so mum has two agouti genes and dad has two black genes so dad's black mum's agouti um, and fully agouti as well she doesn't carry the black gene she's just she has two agouti genes and then the babies will be, you would carry them over, so you, they, the baby would get a capital A from mum, so the Yaguti gene from mum, and a black gene from dad, and they would all be the same. I'm not here. So again with this one, they would get a capital, they would get a Yaguti gene from mum, black gene from dad, and the same here. A Yaguti from mum, black from dad. A gooty from mum, black from dad, right? And this is how you can work out like your probabilities of what kind of mice you're going to get. Um, so all of these babies here will be a gooty because a gooty is dominant. So it will always. So if they have a capital A, they're going to be a gooty. The black won't come through. Um, but so you would have all these babies that have, they're going to be a gooty, but they will carry the black gene. 
yeah, it's pretty much the same. All genetics are pretty much the same. But they are the same. <laughs> um, so, my dog got my window. Um, and then, if you was to take these babies, for example, and... Mm, that's messed up. If you took these babies that are... Let me try and grab a pen. Is that a pen? No. I don't think I have a pen on it. Um, if you then took these babies and bred them together, for example, so they're agoutis but they carry the black gene, you would then get some different a different combination. So you would have these two together, so AA, so you'd get a homozygous agouti, so they carry two agouti genes. And then you would get, this one would be agouti and black, so you'd get an agouti carrying the black gene. And then here, the same thing, you'd have an agouti carrying the black gene. And then here, you would get a black, because there's the two black genes from there. If that makes sense to anyone. So it's all just like adding things, like maths. <laughs> Does that all make sense? And then from there, you can like work out you can then go through each locus and work out what you'll get from each parent. So if we then went over, so say we then took this mouse that has the black base and we went to the next locus, which is the B locus, and say mum was black but she carried chocolate and dad was chocolate. you would then get a black carrying chocolate, chocolate, black, oh, black carrying chocolate, and chocolate again. I will go back over the sea locus if you want me to. And then you could then add those up to see how they would affect the... A locus. So say we got a chocolate. Yeah, once you get the letters, like you can pretty much understand everything. Um, it's just like learning the language of the letters. And then once you've got that, you can kind of read it all easily. You just have to kind of memorize what each letter means. Um, so if we then had that and say we had we took the black mouse which was lowercase a lowercase a to the black mouse and and it changed <laughs> um, and we add the and it also had two chocolate genes that would make a chocolate mouse because it's the black locus so in, in the a locus they're black and then in the b locus they've got the chocolate genes that would make a black mouse and then if we had a a gooty whether they be a carrier or like fully homozygous a gooty um and with the chocolate for example and you can look up like i will do the second part i will go through and say like how each gene affects and like how you can make different things but you can do your own research into it as well um but like with this if you had a a gooty with the chocolate gene you'd make a cinnamon all right and then you can go down each locus and see how each combination is so you can work it all out and then you can look up what that code then means if you can't figure it out yourself like if you don't know it yet so for example uh, this is the best website to go on to if you want to you can't really see it well but um if you go on to yeah. can you see it Okay, here. So um, this is like all the different codes and what they mean. 
um, and I'll add the link in the description bit so each code is on here and what each code means so it'll go down the locus so you have the A locus here these are all the different codes I only covered um, lethal yellow agouti and black and tan <laughs> but there are other ones in there that if you want to learn about them but they're just a little bit more um, uh, they're a little bit more rare like you don't see them as much that's the word I was looking for um, so this bit here that says A non agouti that is black Um, yeah, it can be a little bit confusing unless you understand it, but hopefully you can understand it a bit better now. If not, you can message me and I'll try and uh, go over something if you don't understand it. I will go back over the C locus in a minute as well, because the C locus is the most complicated bit. Um, this isn't what I wanted. <laughs> um, so if we look at the varieties... No, self. So if you choose a colour you wanted, for example blue, this will tell you its code here. So we have, if we read it, we can see this is black because it's too lowercase. They carry no chocolate dilute. They carry two blue dilutes and then they carry no other dilutes on top and that's what makes a blue mouse so once you know what each letter means you can kind of read it better and it makes more sense <laughs> um so that's how you make a blue mouse so if you're like if you was like oh i want to make a blue how do I do that with my mice I currently have? You can look up this code and that will tell you what genes you need to make a blue mouse. So blues are pretty easy, like they're pretty like you only need a black and the blue dilute. Um, but if you wanted to make something a bit more complicated, I guess. Um, like for example Yeah, it is just maths. Um, I don't know if you ever learnt the like grid thing in science, that's where I learnt it the first time and then I learnt it more when I went to college as well because I did a genetics lesson <laughs> in college. So I just like went more in detail then. Um, so for example this is how you make a champagne. So if you see here, so this BC is it's another type of chocolate um, but it is basically the same thing. Um, I believe BC is more common, but it's the same. You can I always just use B. Um, it doesn't matter. So here, down here, you can see this is how you make a champagne. So they have the black base here with the A, and then they have the chocolate dilute. They don't have any C dilutes because it's a capital. They don't have any D dilutes because it's a capital and then they have two lowercase p which means they have pink eyes so for champagne it is a chocolate with pink eyes so the a a b b means it's chocolate and then the pink eyes here so that's what makes champagne and then here are some cute champagnes <laughs> Um, and then they go into a little bit like what they're supposed to look like if you want to go more into like show roots I don't show breed, um, so I don't care <laughs> about their colour. I just breed for temperament and health. Um, so it says it here, like champagne is basically genetically a pink-eyed chocolate. Um, does every kind of mice have a special way to breed a show mouse? Every kind of mice has a special way to breed a show mouse. Every, yeah, they all have their own standards um, on how, it, it's up to you to like interpret what the standard means, but it's kind of like with any other show animal, like um, dogs for example, they have um, kind of like guidelines and then you can interpret what those guidelines mean. 
and how you want your mice to actually look but um, in terms of like colour and stuff um, but there is still kind of like a guideline around what um, it looks like right um, so like they, they will have things that are specific faults that you can't have for example uh, um, with black mice it's considered a fault to have like the yellow guard hairs behind the ear so the less of that you can get the better but I don't know too much about show breeding because I'm not a show breeder so if you want more kind of advice on breeding for shows then there are like loads of other show breeders out there that will know the rule like not the rules but the guidelines a bit better because I do not breed show um, so I'll go back to so this is how it works with everything so if, is there anything someone wants to know about like a specific color someone wants to know how to make and I'll use that as an example but I will go back over to the C dilutes in a minute because I know that one is kind of complicated and I'll talk a bit about splashed as well because I didn't finish talking about that <laughs> at all did I? <laughs> because it is com complicated and I started with splashed and trying to figure out what splashed meant was really confusing <laughs> so is there a specific colour that people anyone wants to know how to make so try is okay I'll go to try so I'll go back to the C dilutes quickly just because try is related to C dilutes um, so if we come back here, um, so the C dilutes there are, so I'll go back on here actually because um, it will tell you what the C dilutes are. So this is the C locus um, and these are all, can you see it on there, hold on, let me wait for it to, okay yeah you can see it. So these are all the C dilutes here. The most common ones are the ones down here. So you have albino, which makes pink eyed white, Himalayan, extreme dilute, which makes things like coffee and beige. My dog's crying at my window, if you can hear that. <laughs> um, and then chinchilla and all of those, right? Um, my phone's dying. I will use, what is it that people need me to go over with the C's? So the C dilutes, um, like I said, are, they are co-dominant, so they don't have a hierarchy other than the no dilute, which is the capital C. Um, so other than that, that's the one that's most dominant, the no dilute. <laughs> But other than that, these are all like on the same level, so you can mix and match them all together, but they can only ever have two. So you can't have like chinchilla and Himalayan and albino. They can only ever have two of the genes, right? So one from mum and one from dad. That makes sense. Um, so there are different combinations you can do so like if we look over here so like if we had a Siamese mouse and we can see that one doesn't work <laughs> okay well we'll look at a different one then um, if we had okay so for example So if we look at chinchilla then, this is all the different examples of chinchilla and how it affects other ones. So this is what chinchilla does. So if they had two chinchilla genes, one from mum, one from dad, how would that affect each base colour, meaning the yellow, agouti and black? So if they have two chinchilla genes and a yellow gene, which is the A wire, right? Can you see that? Or do I need to go off a bit? I have to wait for the delay to see 
what you can see. Uh, right, yeah, so the AY here is the yellow base. So if we have the chinchilla, two chinchilla genes with the yellow base, that will make a cream. Right? And this is an example of a cream here. Um, I haven't read through this, so I don't breed yellows. <laughs> so there might be some. Uh, oh, so another interesting thing about the C dilutes is they a lot of them carry ruby eyes. So, um, so you know, so you have the pink eye gene, but with C dilutes they they can have pink eye and ruby eyes without having the pink eye gene because they are connected to eye colour as well. So just because a mouse has ruby or even pink eyes doesn't mean they have the pink eye gene necessarily um, if they have a C dilute. Um, the most common one to get ruby from is Siamese. Um, and then obviously pink eyed whites don't actually have the pink eyed gene, they have albino gene. So it's a different uh, gene that makes the pink eyes. So they don't have a pink eyed dilute, they have the albino gene which makes the pink eyes. And then Siamese commonly have uh, ruby eyes. Siamese can have ruby or black eyes, and same with Himalayan, they can have ruby or black, or pink, I think, Himalayans can have pink. pink uh, Himalayans tend to have lighter eyes than Siamese, usually, not always. <laughs> um, so then you can kind of go through these and see how chinchilla will then affect the agouti gene. So if they have two agoutis or one agouti from mom, one black from dad, um, you would, and then two chinchilla genes, that will then make ivory, I think that says, which is one of these. Which one is it? I think it was this. Oh no. I don't know where it is. <laughs> they still don't have a picture of ivory, I guess. Um, and then the same here, you have chinchilla with a black base, which would make this up here, whatever that is. Uh, pink eyed lilac, that says. Chinchilla, chinchilla, chin, whatever that word says. <laughs> um, but you can kind of go through them all and see what you can make. Um, but like I said, with. Um, with the C dilutes, they can mix and match together because they are co-dominant. So like with um, the A locus, for example, you can't mix them together. They're either black or they're a goatee, right? Or yellow. <laughs> um, they can't be a goatee and black. Whereas with the C dilutes, they can be chinchilla and Himalayan and they can be albino and Siamese at the same time, which creates a different look every time and a different variety. Does that make sense? Is there anything specifically I haven't gone over about C dilutes that you want me to? And then I will talk about splashed because they're a little bit complicated. They're not really complicated, just they're kind of awkward. <laughs> and then also try, which are related to. And then that's it for the, unless anyone has questions, I'll go over those and then I'll be done for now. And then I will, I will come on again at some point and do the part two, which will be. Um, the combinations and what you can make. I, I have kind of gone over them a little bit, but I will go into them a bit more detail. 
so if anyone wants to like wants me to go over specific varieties or combinations so like if they're getting into breeding and they have a specific color mouse that they're breeding so like they have a blue mouse and a black mouse what they would get they want me to kind of go over that then I'll write it down and I'll go over that next time um, but I'll, for now I'll go over splashed so splashed like I said earlier it is a dominant gene and splashed is SPL that's their um, and it's capital S lowercase pl that's the the genetic code for splashed um, and splashed is dominant meaning they only need one gene to be splashed but it only shows up if they have C dilutes so they need two C dilutes in order to be splashed the most common being either albino I think or Siamese so my splashed are all Siamese based so most pretty much all of them have the points on their face so the dark face um, I think they all have that actually um, so they do need two C dilutes so one of these two of these I guess <laughs> either C I C so either intense chinchilla 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 mottled extreme dilute Himalayan or albino so they need two of those right um, and the splash gene and that's what will make splashed and then for try try is splash pied that's pretty easy um, so they have to be they have to both parents have to be or carry pied and then they also have to at least one of the parents have to be splashed and then they also have to both parents have to be or carry C dilutes so the best way to get tries to breed two tries together but uh, another way to get try is to have Both parents either be or carry pied, and both parents either be splashed. So you could have a splashed mouse that carries pied, bred to a splashed mouse that carries pied, then you would get splashed and try. So try is literally just splash pied. So pied being the white patches, right? So that's all you need to make tries, um, pied and try, pied and splashed, does that make sense? So try is probably, it's easy, it's kind of, it can take a couple steps if you're starting from nothing, but it's not too complicated, I don't think, but it's the most, I would say it's kind of the most complicated to make because you have to have so many genes at once like you have to have C dilutes and you have to have pi and you have to have pi right. so I will I'll probably post this website on my story and I'll put it in the description as well if you need to go over any type of um, terminology and stuff they do have a place for that as well because I did kind of gloss over all of this stuff <laughs> um, but hopefully it all makes sense kind of at least like you have the basics understood and then I will go over like combinations and stuff at some point I, I I don't know whether people would prefer me to do a baby I know loads of people have been asking for baby streams so I don't know if people would prefer me to do a baby stream next or if they would just like me to just do part two tomorrow and baby stream on the weekend make a poll I have no idea how to make a poll oh well make a poll on Instagram I will okay I'll do that um 
Okay, so I'm gonna go now then, and I will update this baby stream on the weekend. Okay. I can do, I could definitely do baby stream on the weekend. I don't know when people would prefer me to do part two of this, though. Um, it'll either be next week or maybe like Friday or something, I don't know. Or tomorrow evening. I will do a poll on Instagram or a question thing and see what people say. But this video will be re-uploaded so if you've missed any of it you can watch it or if you need to go back over something you can watch it again. Um, and then I will post the slideshow thing in the description and on Instagram and the links to these websites that I've used too. And I know the um, pictures that I used on these were all from either the that website I was on, the Finnish Mouse Club thing, and the National Mouse Club. National Mouse? That's what it's called, right? Uh, yeah, the National Mouse Club <laughs> website. That's where all the pictures are from. <laughs> so hopefully it was helpful anyway. Um, so I'm going to go now, because I think my dinner's ready. Um, but thank you for all joining. I didn't just sit here chatting to myself, at least. Um, but I'll go. Hopefully you'll have a good rest of your evening. And I will do everything else that I said <laughs> I would do. So thank you for coming. I'm going to go now. Bye-bye.